In tonight's headlines, the Hummingbird Highway is being upgraded. The Attorney General talks anti-corruption. Belizean youths are consulted. Crime is down in 2017. And the Social Investment Fund takes a tour down south. These stories and more on this week's edition of Belize Now. Thanks for joining us on this Friday, July 14th, 2017. I'm Charlie Hutchinson. Last episode, we highlighted the works being done on the Philip Golson Highway in the Belize District. Tonight, we take a look at the Hummingbird Highway Rehabilitation Project, which is also underway. Here's more on what your government is doing in efforts to secure safer roads for all Belizeans. The Hummingbird Highway is arguably the most scenic highway in Belize. The 54-mile-long road winds around giant mountains covered with lush green vegetation and through low valleys where streams and rivers run freely. Now, thanks to the work of the government of Belize and its funding partners, motorists and commuters are now appreciating a safer and more attractive highway. The Hummingbird Highway Rehabilitation Project basically entails four sections. Section 1, which is from Dangriga to Alta Vista. Section 2, which is from Alta Vista to Middlesex. Section 3, from Middlesex to Saboon River. And Section 4, from Saboon River to Belmopan. At this time, we've awarded two contracts. Section 1, which is Dangriga to Alta Vista. And Section 4, which is Belmopan to Saboon. We've completed Section 4. Section 4 basically entails the resealing of the entire highway um, to improve uh, road safety in terms of um, pavement stability. Um, we've also added road markings. We've also added uh, cat size to improve safety as well. Currently underway is Section 1 from Dangriga Town to Alta Vista Village. We've completed, I would say, approximately 85% of that contract. That basically entails the same type of work, the resealing of the highway, um, the installation of safety features such as sign, road markings, cut size. The ministry has yet to start the procurement process for sections 2 and 3. However, the works will be similar to the other sections, including realignment of the highway and cutting down of the vertical alignment to improve visibility and safety. Evandale Moody also made mention of some other key changes to come. In terms of the bridges, there are a total of seven bridges. Um, all of them will be changed. Um, we have three that will be replaced with bridges and four will be replaced with large box culverts. So with these changes, we'll be able to have two-way traffic on these bridges, um, which will definitely create a bit a safer environment for motorists and commuters within the area. Through these improvements, all users will realize advances in economic, tourism, and agricultural opportunities, further encouraging social development in Belize, particularly in the South. For Belize Now, I'm Miriam Longsworth. The contract for the Hummingbird Highway Rehabilitation Project was awarded to a and Construction Limited from the Coyote District for approximately 16 million Belize dollars. The project is being funded by the Government of Belize through a loan from the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development and the OPEC Fund. Belize has charted its way ahead to ensure its compliance as a state party to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. And recently, Belize's Attorney General sat with our Belize Now team to discuss our progress thus far. Here's more from Janelle Mencias. December 12, 2016 marked a historical and significant milestone as Belize became party to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC for short. Attorney General and UNCAC focal point, Honorable Michael Perifit, sat with us and explained what this means for Belize. In a nutshell, what you're doing is you're bringing the country up to a standard with the passage of laws and policies primarily that would limit and hopefully eliminate corruption within the country based on the structures you've put in place. It's not just legislation, but your government structure. But even if you have a structure in place that would limit the possibility of corruption, and UNCAP, from my discussions with them, 
would say, if you have a structure that's in place, that's working, then why not legislate that that be the case? So even though you may be suggesting a change in structure, essentially comes down to a change in legislation and penalties for corruption and the repatriation of assets from corruption. In May, representatives from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime hosted a two-day workshop for key stakeholders on the UNCAC Implementation Review Mechanism, which is simply a peer review process that assists state parties to effectively implement the convention. Recently, the Attorney General joined other focal points and government experts in Vienna, Austria, to participate in further training. He shared with us the outcome of those sessions. Myself and Crown Council Trenton, for the purpose of selecting or be selected um, by two countries who will oversee our procedures to ensure, or not really ensure, but to report on whether or not we're doing what is necessary to combat corruption. The traditional way of doing that, and it's called the drawing of lots, a country from within your region will review you along with a country essentially far away from your country as possible. Belize was chosen by Haiti from CARICOM and from Tuvalu in the Pacific. As the newest state to accede to the UNCAC, Belize will be reviewed in its first cycle during which the country is expected to address Chapter 3, Criminalization and Law Enforcement and Chapter 4, International Cooperation of the UNCAC. Honorable Perifit further explained how the process, which commenced on June 30th, works. What those two countries will do by July 21st, they will select 15 experts from each country who would come from their structures within their government, probably DPP, Crown Council, FIU people and stuff like that. Belize will also put forward 15 of our experts. And so those 30 experts coming from Haiti and Tuvalu will then enter into a discussion with our 15 experts. And then Tuvalu and Haiti will prepare a report that they will submit by November 30th. Further to this initial report, experts from Haiti and Tuvalu will make a visit to Belize. The Attorney General explained what will occur during the visit, which is scheduled for January 2018. They will talk to various partners. They will um, liaise with the different experts that we have to get information so that they can compile that report that will be done sometime in March or April of 2018. Haiti and Tuvalu will, along with the UNDP, will provide an executive summary of their findings and that will be published for the world to see. We, there will also be a thicker report that consists of private stuff, confidential stuff that we may choose as Belize to not publish. As a part of the review process, Belize is also required to complete and submit a self-assessment checklist, which the Attorney General expects will be completed before the deadline of August 30th, since the process started early. A crucial part of this process are the people on the UNCAP project board. We have the NGO community, we have the opposition, we have um, FIU, DPP, all aspects um, of the society that we believe could contribute to the, to the conversation and to enable us to be UNCA compliant. That board sits down and they discuss the different issues and the different problems and challenges that we have in the country and they come up with solutions as to how to address them along with they play a huge part in doing the self-assessment. Belize is also in an interesting scenario, since while being under review, Belize will be reviewing Antigua and Barbuda for its second cycle. Additionally, Belize has been exemplary in the implementation as it has jump-started much of the required processes. 
For instance, the focal point is expected to be appointed three weeks after notification of review, but Belize had completed this months before. Honorable Perfit shared some more major accomplishments. I am happy to say that for the most part, what people, countries are celebrating, in the initiatives that they are celebrating are the laws that we already have in place for years. It was a bombshell moment when one of the countries said that they've established an integrity commission. We've had an integrity commission for years. Uh, we have contractor general, we have an ombudsman, we have a DPP that's constitutionally created, we have um, FIU, we have, uh, we have a separate auditor general. And so it seems to me that when the self-assessment is finished, that Belize will be starting at a very high point because a lot of the structures that the United Nations would like to see um, involved in the government, running of government, we already have in place. It is important to note that with reasonable justification, a state party may opt to defer participation to the following year of the review cycle. Belize has chosen not to exercise this option. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Mencius. The United Nations Convention Against Corruption, which was entered into force on December 14, 2005, is the only legally binding universal anti-corruption instrument. The convention covers five main areas which include preventive measures, criminalization and law enforcement, international cooperation, asset recovery and technical assistance, and information exchange. According to the website of the United Nations Organization on Drugs and Crime, there are a total of 181 state parties to the convention and 140 signatories. After the break, more stories. Stay with us. If breastfeeding is tougher than you expected, try not to get discouraged. Feeding a newborn every few hours can be tiring, and it's okay to have a slow start. Just remember that the more often you breastfeed your baby, the more milk your breast will produce and the more natural breastfeeding is likely to feel. Ask your baby's doctor for help if needed, especially if ever feeding is painful or your baby isn't gaining weight. Although your nipples might be tender for the first few weeks, breastfeeding isn't supposed to hurt. If you haven't worked with a lactation consultant or your baby's doctor for a referral, or check with the pediatrician department at the local hospital. This message was brought to you by NCFC and Special Envoy for Women and Children. The first two phases of the Hummingbird Highway Rehabilitation Project from the Belmopan Roundabout Junction to Saboon Bridge and Alta Vista Bridge to Dangriga Town has already made a remarkable difference for commuters and residents alike. These first two phases are a $16.5 million investment by the government of Belize. Under this project, the highway is being rehabilitated through improvement of the road pavement to create a safer environment for the public. Improvements, especially in the areas that pose a high risk to motorists, include the introduction of paved road shoulders, high visibility line markings, reflective road studs, bus laybys, and other features that will bring the entire road segment in line with internationally recognized standards. Additionally, the replacement of the existing single lane bridges will reduce road user risks. These improvements will increase economic tourism and agricultural opportunities further encouraging the social development of Belize, particularly in the South. The Government of Belize, moving Belize forward.
On Tuesday, July 11th, the National Committee for Families and Children, in collaboration with the Office of the Special Envoy for Women and Children, UNICEF Belize, the World Health Organization, the Ministry of Health, and other duty bearer stakeholders, convened at the Radisson Fort George Hotel and Marina to consult with adolescents in order to hear what their priorities and concerns are and to have them contribute to policy decision and implementation. Andrew Pitts tells us more. On June 8, 2017, the National Committee for Families and Children launched the Children's Agenda 2017-2030. The agenda spelled out six transformational goals, five main outcomes, and just over 130 commitments, all in an effort to have Belize respond to issues affecting children and young people and to have Belize become the best place in the world to raise a child. On July 11th, a follow-up exercise comments entitled Adolescents Speak Out, a Conversation for Adolescents with Adolescents. UNICEF's country representative, Dr. Susan Cassidy, told us about the session. Today we have um, about 18 adolescents from uh, nine municipalities from across Belize who have come to meet with um, policy makers, program managers, civil society representatives, faith-based organizations and, um, and, and implementing partners to talk about priorities affecting adolescents um, and specifically to come up um, with an agreement on those priorities, those key issues around which we must um, communicate around which we must talk and have a national conversation to make sure that we motivate the kinds of action at the community level. We asked Dr. Cassidy how UNICEF believes and the other agencies present intends to use the data that will be gathered from the consultation. It can be expected that the discussion today will influence not just policies, but the way that the policies that we have in place, because we do have them, are actually implemented. Rec um, in the last few weeks, um, the National Committee for Families and Children launched the Children's Agenda, which provides a really important platform for us to move to change results for children and adolescents. But unless we have the kind of partnerships which include adolescents um, to make sure that our responses are relevant to their main concerns, and experiences, the implementation is where we will struggle. During her presentation at the session, Ms. Paulette Wade, UNICEF's monitoring and evaluating specialist, shared some of the key indicators in the most recent mixed report. She discussed the troubling prevalence of adolescence fertility, abuse, and secondary school dropout. Ms. Wade told us a little about the mix and why it is important for social agencies and duty bearers to engage adolescents when crafting policies to address their needs. The mix stands for multiple indicator cluster survey. It's a household survey um, that's done every five years. This is a survey that UNICEF supports the government and not only Belize um, in terms of collecting information on health issues, um, child protection issues, education issues as it relates to children so that the country can better report. We used to report on the MDGs, now it's now the Sustainable Development Goals. So it provides a, an avenue for countries to be able to report by having up-to-date and reliable data. Children um, participation is key for us. Um, we want to ensure that they are part of the development, they are part of the interventions that are um, done for them. One of the adolescents present was 12-year-old Herson Makwani, a member of the Corozal Children Advisory Body. He shared with us his views on some of the findings in the mixed report and his experience at the opening session. I thought I should applaud the Ministry of Education for the high, extremely high literacy rate. They're really involving our children today. They're asking us about our opinions, what we feel is important. I feel like today is a good day. It's very interesting. So I think this is very important. This is why it was Article 12 of the United Nations Convention of the Rights of a Child. I feel like they're totally respecting that right. And this will help us children in the future and our future generations. It will provide them with the basis that we had. It will be even better for them. As children, they will be respected. They will have everything they need. They, the laws and the policies are already there in place to help them. The four-day consultative exercise concluded today, July 14th. According to UNICEF's Deidre Haylock, 
The next step is to use what was learned during this exercise to produce educational radio and television content relevant to adolescents. For Belize Now, I am Andrea Pitts. No country is a stranger to crime, including Belize. However, this year's crime statistics reflects a reduction in crime countrywide relative to the same period last year and an increase in efforts made by the Belize Police Department to combat crime. On Tuesday, July 11th, a police press conference was held during which Commissioner Alan Wiley made remarks on this year's crime statistics. The statistics that was released show that in terms of major incidents for murders, it shows that um, from January to June 2016, we had 73, compared to 2017, where we had 70 at that time. Um, in terms of rape, it showed for 2016 up to the end of January, we had 10 cases, where at the end of June 2017, we had eight cases. In terms of robbery, it showed that we had 98 cases of robbery in 2016, compared to 92 cases in 2017. In terms of burglary, it showed that we had 389 cases reported, compared to 329 at the end of June 2017. And in terms of theft, it showed that we had 51 cases reported at the end of June 2016, compared to 34 cases at the end of June 2017. That total in terms of major incidents shows that at the end of June 2016, there was a total of 1,078 incidents compared to 886 at the end of June 2017. This shows a reduction of reported cases of major crimes. While incidents of major crimes have reduced, the statistics of arrests in respect to those crimes shows that the number of arrests made by the police police department have increased. That statistics also revealed a number of arrests in, re in respect to those various incidents of crime. Again, it showed that um, comparative June 2016 to June 2017, there is a increase in the number of arrests for the various categories of crimes. While the commissioner emphasizes that he takes no consolation in the fact that murders are down, Minister of State with Responsibility for Home Affairs, Honorable Elodio Aragon, emphasized that the Belize Police Department will be working continuously to combat crime in Belize. I just want to again reassure the public that the Belize Police Department is working in terms of trying to solve these murders. You know, we are carrying out the investigation as best as possible. I know the, the, the person, uh, the head National Crime Investigation Branch is, has his people and investigators working on it, along with, with members of the police department in the various districts. The minister concluded that the integrity of the department must be at the highest to ensure a better future for policing in the country. After the break, we take you to the south with the Social Investment Fund and our segment, In Case You Missed It, Don't Go Anywhere. This week, I'll be talking to you about sibling spacing. Did you know that sibling spacing is important? Yes, it is. An analysis of studies involving more than 11 million women, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in April 2006, found that the health of a baby is much better if the female or mother waits a minimum of 18 months before having a conceived a mother. Many studies have shown that women are often anemic for a good year after giving birth because of the months of iron allotted to the baby and placenta and the loss of blood during birth. Babies born to women within the first 18 months after giving birth run greater risk of delivery-related complications from anemia to premature birth and even low birth weight. So parents, give your babies the best physical start at life. 
This message was brought to you by NCFC and Special Envoy for Women and Children. The Philip Goldson Highway between Belize City and the Philip Goldson International Airport is getting a major facelift to the tune of $31.5 million. Section B of the highway upgrading project between Hallover Bridge and the Buttonwood Bay Boulevard roundabout is underway at an investment of $21 million. Works consist of the full rehabilitation of the road to paved standard, which includes the widening of the road to four lanes, lined sidewalks and drains, wide shoulders, median and parking plus a bus lane at designated sections of the road. LED road lighting will be installed along with road safety features such as signs, reflectors and road markings. The project will also facilitate in the improvement of underground infrastructure for the public utility companies. The Government of Belize, moving Belize forward. Recognizing the critical role that the Belize Social Investment Fund plays in the country's national development, Honorable Erwin Contreras, Minister with Responsibility for CIF, embarked on a national tour of CIF projects. Janelle Rodriguez tells us more. The Social Investment Fund, or CIF, is the gift that keeps on giving. CIF has been able to make drastic changes in key areas of education, economic, cultural, environmental, and political development. Over the past few weeks, Honorable Erwin Contreras, Minister with Responsibility for CIF, traveled to rural and distant areas from the north to the south of the country on a national tour of the most recent CIF projects. William Lam, CIF's Executive Director, told us more. Since the Minister came on and was given this, this portfolio, we endeavored to organize uh, a tour so that the minister could have been abreast, uh, appraised of the various projects that are ongoing. Implementing is more than just hiring a consultant contractor and getting the work done. It's every process along the way so that when it's finished, even the person who are using it are well aware of what happened, what took place. But even more so, the ministry that has sourced the funds also know what these funds are being used for on the ground. The minister toured Chinook St. Viator Vocational High School and Our Lady of Guadalupe Primary School in the Corozal District, the Santa Cruz Primary and Preschool Projects in Stan Creek District, and the Tria Primary and Preschool Projects in the Toledo District. All cases in which old, unbecoming buildings have been replaced by new, durable, and learning conducive facilities. Students who were once unable to attend classes on rainy days because of classroom buildings that were highly prone to flooding will be able to enjoy learning in a befitting and well-organized environment. Well, the projects we do aim to improve the life of Belizeans, specifically the vulnerable Belizeans in the villages and, and the certain parts of, of uh, municipalities and uh, it helped to improve the environment for education, spacious classrooms, um, better lighting, um, uh, access to proper restroom and uh, that's just the education sector. On his tour, Honorable Erwin Contreras also visited the top-of-the-line solar-driven water systems in Mascal in the Belize district and Pueblo Vuejo and Conejo, both in the Toledo districts. The systems will provide villagers with continuous supply of reliable and safe quality water to meet their daily needs. Having portable water for most people in Belize is, is a norm, but some people still have to run to get a bucket of water in the morning. And sometimes that chore is on the student who then have to go to school. And when we put in a water system or a upgrade one, it's to ensure that just like the rest of the country, these people can have access to water. In the case
case that villagers do need medical attention, however, they will be able to rely on SIF polyclinic projects, which include Chinooks Polyclinic and San Narciso Polyclinics in the Corozal District, all of which the minister and the SIF team were able to visit as a part of the tour. With the health sector, having uh, the, the health care nearby next door and don't have to travel miles, hours to try to get health care is, is critical. And uh, one cannot improve themselves out of poverty if, if I'm getting sick and cannot be taken care of within a timely manner. And so the policy of the Ministry of Education is to, is sorry, Ministry of Health, is to strategically place, whether it's health center, polyclinic, in various communities to ensure that access is available, ensuring that a doctor is in, in, in house and it's not on occasion this time of the week that the doctor will show up. New schools, new polyclinics and new running water systems. Villagers from north to south of Belize will be, and in some cases already are, experiencing all these developments in 2017. The Belize Social Investment Fund and the Minister with Responsibility, Honorable Erwin Contreras, hope that these national development efforts will help to break the cycle of poverty in Belize. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Rodriguez. These national developmental projects financed courtesy of the government of Belize are designed to foster and enhance Belize's social, economic, cultural, environmental and political development. The Belize Defense Force Air Wing carried out its first rescue mission using the UH-1H on July 8, 2017. The mission was carried out in the village of San Benito Poite in the Toledo district where three children ages 10, 14 and 16 years old were rescued. The three children went on a fishing expedition and were stranded on the far bank of the Poite River that had crested above normal due to a flash flood. As a result, the hammock bridge was damaged making it unusable and the main bridge was submerged making it impassable. And that's it for this edition of Belize Now. If you want to provide feedback or send in your comments, please feel free to email us at info at pressoffice.gov.bz or visit our Facebook page and let us know what you think. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. Until next time.